Hello and welcome to another Building Clouds blog video demonstration. This one's all about orchestrating Windows Azure. My name is Charles Joy. I'm a senior program manager with the TED team. Agenda again, very easy. I'm going to do a scenario and run book demonstration. The example solution components are System Center 2012 SP1 Orchestrator, the Orchestrator Integration Pack for Windows Azure that's shipped with SP1, Windows Azure itself, and of course Windows Server is what we're running everything on. On to the demo. Here we're going to run through uh, some run books that I've created and the scenarios are orchestrated deployment, deep provision, and then even a VM move from on-prem to Azure. Uh, so the deployment is deploying a, a virtual machine, the deep provision is destroying that virtual machine and its uh, components, and then the VM move obviously is moving a VM. <laughs> So all I'm doing for Azure in these runbooks is using the integration pack and PowerShell. So those are, should be pretty easy to pick up. Um, th this set of runbooks here, let me minimize some of this stuff, is what I will be giving out. Uh, but I'm going to kick this one off here. Basically, it's going to read from a deployment file that I have set up on the hard drive of this VM. And it's going to kick something off. And I'm going to just kick this off, and I'll talk more in depth about this later. I'm just going to pull the third line and pass the data there. So, And I'll go through what I have set up already, but I wanted to verify I don't have the cloud service that I'm going to put up there. So I'm going to put up TED ORVM003 right now. It's going to happen automatically by passing in the number three here magically. I'm going to run this and it's going to kick this guy off. It's going to read the third line from that text file, which has all the information that's going to pass and be used. So what I'm going to do now is we're going to see where this guy is. So you can see I have a runbook that calls other runbooks. I've built this in a way that basically all the runbooks across the top do something small in case I need to restart them or you know triage them it's easier so let's go through them a little slower than that first real one create a service for the VMs and because I could add a service certificate to that service these are activities that are available from the uh, integration pack itself create a storage account it's convenient and I've created these so you could pass any of this information in and it'll create that storage account. So you can use this one runbook, or you can use the runbook that's stitched together to do everything. So I've made a modular so you can do that. Create an Azure container. Part of that is I want to return data. What's the container name? Because I'm going to use that when I create the blob. Or in this case, create the VM deployment, and that's what this is all about. So this is the stage we're at right now. It's currently creating the VM deployment. If we open this guy up, we can see there's a lot of fields to fill in there. But this, once you have it set, and I'm using mostly published data here, you don't have to worry about it. In fact, I'm feeding all this data in from previous runbooks and from that text file, so it's pretty easy. So let's go to Azure and take a look at where it thinks it is. All right, obviously we have the service, the storage accounts created because we're already creating the VM. And you can see the virtual machine is currently being provisioned. So this will be done within the next 5, 10 minutes. But I've got plenty more to walk through during that time. What did I want to do? I wanted to deploy a VM automatically from a text file. Well, what if I wanted to deploy a VM automatically from Service Manager? I could have done that too. What if I wanted to integrate uh, System A with uh, system B. It doesn't matter what they are. In this case, I've built a runbook, this one specifically, to take information from a file. I'm reading this file and what line number. I passed in line number three. And if I actually go to that machine and show you, here's the file. You can see I have three lines of data that I'm just reading. That could have come from a SQL table. It could have come from anywhere. I, when I started playing around with this, I just created a text file first off. You can see I have lots of data in there, and all of this data is being read from here, parsed, and then um, distributed throughout the runbooks to uh, perform those tasks that I wanted to perform. So each one of these activities actually calls another runbook. So it's a sort of a subroutine concept where 
This here, we'll call this, it'll perform these actions, return back, and then proceed or not proceed. I have this as all happy path, so if everything goes well, it just goes along. But anywhere you see one of these green arrows, I could also have a red arrow coming out to make decisions on the fly. So let's take a look at the virtual machines. Ah, that's there. So in beta of this, I'm going to sidetrack real quick because that's finished. In beta of this, there was no concept of endpoints in the IP. So you could create a VM all you want, but you couldn't automatically go connect to it if you had the information. Now we have the ability to automatically create endpoints, which is basically just a, you know, how do I connect to that machine? In the runbooks themselves, you could actually download the RDP file to a specific machine or mail it or something like that. So that's really nice. I didn't do that for this demonstration because it wasn't quite ready. Plus, it's not that difficult to go to the, the VM, click connect, save it. Go to that machine. And then... Log in. And now this VM is in the cloud. So that's some, I mean, it's just a VM that was provisioned based on the images that are, that are in Azure. That may or may not be interesting. I don't know. Um, but you can spin up as many as you want. You can put them in the same affinity group. They could talk to each other. You can even have it set up so they could talk to on-premise VMs, all that happy stuff. So that's the machine that we created from scratch. And uh, it's just sitting out there. But that endpoint, when I, went, when I started using what was released for SP1, I didn't realize they put endpoints in there. And that wasn't part of my original demonstration. It was just, OK, then I'll go create the endpoint manually, and then we'll log in and stuff like that. But they are there now. It's part of, built into the IP. And so you can automatically create them, download the RDP file, and you can you know, connect immediately. Or you know, not automatically, but immediately. So and you can create whatever endpoints you want. This one tends to be more impressive for demonstrations. So I do want to pop back over and show a slide real quick to show a little bit about the environment. We can check the bottom one off. <laughs> We've done that. We have two other services, one and two. Two is going to, I'm going to delete two. I'm going to show you, I'm going to pa pass the second line of data through that's in that file, and I'm going to go and destroy number two, because three just got there. We don't want to destroy it right away. And one was there because I wanted the service to be there, and uh, I'm actually going to run the, power, or the run book to associate the disk that I uploaded via PowerShell from on-prem to uh, a VM. So to do, this is our to-do list, I'm going to destroy this one. And then I'm going to create a new VM based on a VHD that I uploaded last night. It takes an hour. There's no way I can get it done in this time. I will show you the results. Take a look at the destroy VM or uh, run book. So this one's a little more complicated. Uh, the reason I'm using junctions here is basically to as a wait function. And because I need information from this file in these activities. And there could be multiple disks associated with a service or a VM or something like that. So I didn't want to try to delete the service multiple times. I want to do it one time. So that's one of the reasons you see junctions in here. Don't fret about those. It's just part of the process. What it's going to do is going to read a specific line number, which I'm going to go change right now before I forget. And all this runbook is doing is calling the other runbook. And I'm going to pass the line number in. So now the process is, I'm going to remove the endpoint because I can. I wanted to show that you can do that. And remember, every one of these activities has a runbook behind it doing the activity that it's, it's named after. So I'm going to remove the endpoint. I'm going to invoke the deployment deletion. So I'm going to actually delete the deployment that that VM is associated with. At the same time, these are running in parallel, I'm going to get the disk information. So how many disks are in this? deployment, and how many are attached to the VMs in that deployment. And I'm going to pass that, once it's finished deleting the deployment, I'm going to pass that to the disk deletion. And here, we'll pop into that for a second. I had to loop on this because it's going to fail. It's going to fail. It's going to fail. It's going to fail. Because it doesn't know that the deployment's dead yet. 
I could delete the deployment and it still thinks it's there until it doesn't think it's there and then it'll delete. Back to the process. So we're deleting the disks. It's going to loop until the disks are deleted. It's very important because you can't delete the storage account until the disks are deleted. After that, I delete the service. Then I delete the blob. Then I delete the storage container. Then if all goes well, I delete the storage account. And then we're clean. We're done. So that means I could spin up a deployment and take it down within a matter of however long it takes to do the, these activities. I'm going to kick this off. You'll see it start to do some of its deletion stuff. I'm going to verify, make sure that's two. I'm going to kick it off. And then we can watch that kick off for the first part. You'll kind of see here what the junctions do once this kicks off. So automatically, now it looks like we have three things running. Well, we kind of do. This guy, this guy, and this guy are running. Junction two is waiting for all this stuff to be done. So these two are running in parallel. Once this is done, it waits here for this to be finished. Then it does this, and it moves on. So that's, that's a, kind of the definition of a run book. I've defined a process for it to perform. Because I needed it to do things in a specific order, some things I could do in parallel, like deleting the endpoint and getting the disk information, some things I have to wait for. And this is part of the sequencing of that entire process. This thing's done, it looks like. See, did it delete the account? It did. How exciting. Oh, yeah, look, two stuff is gone, see? So last night, I initiated this runbook. And I actually built this runbook out to be demo friendly. Because there's three or two main steps. Move the VHD up, which takes forever. And then use that VHD to add a VM role or create you know, a deployment with that disk. So the add a VM instance is, it's not instant, but it's pretty fast. It's way shorter than an hour. So I'll be demoing that for you today. Last night, I want to show that I initiated this to just move the VHD from on-prem to uh, Azure. And I, I'll prove that in many ways. One, here's the log, and the logs don't lie. Here's Azure. We go to virtual machines, disks, TED uploaded, 001. And actually, where I got that VM is I copied one of my SPF provision VMs that I'm going to use for my Hyper-V replica demo. I'll show you that real quick. So here on my host, I have three VMs, SPF one, test 01. I'm, these are the ones I do for Hyper-V replica. But I want to show you what this VM looks like. You see failover log? OK. That's one of these VMs. I shut one of these down, exported it, and that's what I moved up to the cloud. So we'll see that same exact VM in the cloud. So, so there it is. So let's kick off the runbook. And so I've set this up basically to say, for demo purposes, just upload, just deploy, or do both. Right? You may or may want to use that functionality. I don't know. I needed to do that because I didn't want to show the upload and the deploy. So right now. I'm going to change this to just deploy, check it in, run it. And then in a moment, this will kick off. And it's currently running this activity, which is leveraging all that other good stuff that I passed in to add a VM instance to 001, like I talked about in that slide previously. So if we go back to my PowerPoint slide, we've done this, we've done this, and now we are doing this step. We're creating that VM, TED OR moved 001, with the disk that we uploaded last night. Pretty simple. You could do that all in one fell swoop. It would just be an hour and however long it takes to deploy. So if we hop back over here. This shouldn't take too long. 
let's hop back in and see how that uh, VM is doing. Looks like it's done. So I'm going to go in here, create an endpoint real quick. All right, it's adding that endpoint. So once I have this endpoint, I'm going to log into the VM so you can see that it's the same one that I moved up. So I'm going to connect to this. Here's the moved one. So essentially, this is a VM that I had that has been moved up. It's my Hyper-V replica stuff. You can see this is just a copy of my, my Hyper-V replica plan fail over one of my VMs that I do. In fact, it kicked this off just now, I think, because I have a uh, scheduled task in there that two minutes after the VM boots up to execute some PowerShell to go look at the KVP, and there's nothing in the KVP right now because it's not associated, but that's part of the Hyper-V thing. It just still happens to work here. There you have it. This is the VM that was on-prem. Now it's in Azure. Let me hop back to PowerPoint. So in summary, there are multiple options for demonstration. You could deploy a Windows Azure VM using Orchestrator Runbooks, deprovision that Windows Azure VM using Orchestrator Runbooks, or move a VM from on-prem Windows Server 2012 to Windows Azure Public Cloud with Orchestrator and, well, System Center SP1. All this is available now, obviously. Uh, you're reading this blog post, but if you found the video, it's all available. Check out our uh, blog at uh, http colon whack whack aka dot ms whack building clouds. Also, please follow us on Twitter at building underscore clouds. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed.